Okay, we're glad to know that you're still there. It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And uh, we're going to talk energy now, especially power. Uh, Nigeria generates only oh, just a, a little over 4,000 megawatts of uh, electricity. Some people even debate that it is not up to that. It's about 3,000 megawatts for a country of over 200 million people. And that is grossly inadequate. And so stakeholders have been asked to invest more or drive more investment into this energy sector so that we can have at least 200,000 uh, megawatts of electricity in Nigeria. And so how can that come to be? And why is that really, really necessary? We're going to be talking with uh, the CEO, uh, Captree, um Chairman Hydrogen and New Energies Group of Nigerian Gas Association uh, in the person of Mr. Olabode Showumi. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Showumi. Good morning. Um, it's a pleasure to be at your station. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Okay, so um, as we all know, the energy supply, the power we have in Nigeria is grossly inadequate. 200 million people and we are having 4,000 or even if it's 5,000, it's uh, kind of ridiculous. But when we think about this thing, the first thing that crosses our mind is why is it so hard to generate electricity in a country with abundance of water, abundance of sunlight, abundance of wind, and everything else that can be used to generate this electricity. Why is it that difficult? Okay, so, so the problem is really not generation, because um, yes, we have within the system about 4,000 megawatts, but there is an installed capacity that is significantly more than that. So what, what that means in simple terms is that if you were to generate, to, um, assuming today, for two times of that, we are not able to transmit it because our transmission network uh, is limited. And the limitations is what stops uh, trans I mean, what stops what is being generated from being transmitted. Of course, the other part of it is the distribution network. In simple terms, the network, I mean, the value chain is running at a loss. So if you were to produce power at, say, 100 Naira, the cost of selling it as at today is less than that 100 Naira. So there is an issue of uh, the supply chain uh, issue. So as a result, you find out that some of those within the distribution system, that's the discourse, they choose, they pick and choose where they actually want to sell their power. So there, there's a myriad of issues which are peculiar to Nigeria, they are not technical issues, so it's not about competence and all those kind of things. But, but there are supply chain issues that are limiting the availability of power to the average Nigerian. Of course, another factor which is hindering it is the culture and attitude of the Nigerian environment. So, I mean, so typically, when you see a person who is engaged in energy theft, so he bypasses a meter and gets uh, power for himself, the average person call such a person a smart guy. I mean, and what that means, what they seem to forget is that that money goes into a system. And as a result, I mean, as a result, somebody has to pay for it. So they're not really smart. They're just cheating the system. And the more people cheat the system, the more likely the system is going to collapse. So our own thinking as a people as well is also a hindrance to the uh, proper functioning of the uh, of the industry as a whole. Yeah, well, we will still, sorry, Maureen, we'll, we'll still talk about uh, the, all this, but you're talking about cheating the system, and the system also seems to be cheating the people and making the people even smarter. You, who has learned to shoot without missing, others have learned to fly without patching, uh, and so on. You find where people, where the, the discourse or whoever is responsible comes and gives you estimated bill that is crazy enough to just make you shout. And sometimes there is no, no power at all for a long time, and you're still paying the bills that are really, really crazy and made the people to uh, become so smart. But it still boils to the, to the why. Why is it that a system cannot be checked in such a way that we will have what we need to have at what time that we need to have? Because we've seen other times where we have been able to conquer. For instance, payment of salary. It used to be paid by hand, 
And because of that, there were a lot of things that were happening. There was a lot of corruption in the payments and all that. Now they pay through the banks, and these things have been reduced. So why is it still a problem that will fester in our economy, that we cannot check these things that happen that are not good enough? Okay, so <laughs> this is about systems thinking. So it's just basically understanding systems function. Um, yes, you are right. Uh, there are sharp practices within the um, within the discourse, which I think to some extent even the regulator is aware of that. But there is a system in place in which you should check that uh, the solution to it is not for the customer to also cheat the system. So if we are to use the common parlance, it's a two wrongs don't make it right. Now the point I'm trying to make in all of this is not to approach on blame. The question you asked me is that why don't we have power? And I highlighted the factors that are hindering power. And whether it is the disco that is cheating the system or it is the people that are cheating the system, it is the system that is suffering. So what we are looking at in a situation is that in a bid for one party to get wiser, the system suffers, which at the end of the day is still the system. And what that means is that you don't have a system that is functional. And what that means is that you don't have people who have power. So my own job is not to apportion blame. That's for people within law enforcement and people within the... Mine is to give a technical analysis and to identify what are the causative factors on the issues. And that's what I've done. So primarily, at the end of the day, like I said, if we're to look at solutions, there has to be a reorientation, a cultural reorientation. Mm. Just Peter Drucker that said that culture defeats strategy. In other words, no matter the strategy or the ideas that are going to be brought to solve the problem in the power sector, as long as the culture of the people is not yeah, is antagonistic to those new ideas, those ideas will not function. So there is a reorientation in terms of the average, the thinking of the average Nigerian, which is important for the power sector to actually function. All right. Over the years, we've heard these problems of transmission, distribution, which you've highlighted. And then you've also said it's a peculiar thing to us. You know, uh, we have a peculiar challenge as a people, which is a major reason why we're not having light. And so I'm wondering why government after government uh, have not been able to identify and deal with these peculiar challenges that are peculiar to us as a people. And another thing is, as long as the people continue to feel cheated, as Nyamgul has said, and as long as the people continue to feel like, what am I gaining from being a Nigerian anyway? If I can tap uh, energy and steal it somehow, somehow, maybe that's the only thing. Because you're talking about the mindset. You're talking about the mm -hmm. culture. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole bouquet of problems. Talk to us on how this present administration should be tackling this peculiar challenges that Nigeria has beyond talk. Because Nigerians have had all these talks over time and over time. And experts like yourself have also talked repeatedly. But Nigerians want to see action. I mean, can we not do this? Is this something that we as a people should just give up? Look, this is your destiny as a people mm -hmm. to remain in darkness. Is, is, is that the answer? Is that the final discussion that we should be having over this matter? Or is there a way out? Okay, first of all, um, so in order to solve a problem, you need to analyze it. So my mind, I think that was a scientist. He had a PhD in biochemistry, and growing up as a child, I used to see him working in the lab, and one of the things he would say is that um, you need to separate the facts so that you can actually identify what is the causative factors. You have not yet... Uh, we have made a number of things up in the question. So there are some part of it that is political. I'm not a politician. That's for politicians to do. There are some part of it that are social. Um, so those issues of whether people feel that they are Nigerians or not, those ones have nothing to do with the power sector. Those are social issues in the industry. The things with the power sector, it doesn't matter whether people have identified it and mentioned it one million years, as long as they do not correct it, those things will be there. So, for example, if a student feels WIEC, as long as the person has not retaken WIEC, he remains failed. So, for the student to pass WIEC, he has to study again, take the exam, 
pass. There is issue with transmission. Unless those issues with transmission are solved, nothing will happen. So if it is not solved next year, it will still remain that those are the factors that needs to be done. Now, as to the issues of whether government should just do it, the power sector is privatized. So there are aspects of it that are privatized. So there are aspects of it that are not in the hands of government. So, and that is important to note. So if they are not in the hands of government, what are the things that people can do as a people to collect those things? So those are the kind of questions we should be looking at. How can the private, excuse me, how can the private sector be more effective in their work to ensure that they produce for the nation in terms of what we should do? I think those are the questions that are to be asked. And then people need to be knowledgeable. <laughs> Nobody ever achieved anything with ignorance, no matter how angry and forceful they are. So in other words, people need to understand the fundamentals of how this power sector works. And based on that understanding, put pressure on the government in the right areas. When you ask the average man on the street and you tell them that, okay, so these are the issues, these are the issues, what do you have with it? They say, no, I don't care. I don't want to know. All I want is power. But that's not how life works. I mean, during the, um, during the global crisis, uh, there was a time I was in Australia, and the nation, they, they, they did a proper of the issues to the extent that even the plumber, the bricklayer, and all that, they understood what the forest was saying, what the issues are. So when the people contributed, they contributed based on knowledge. Here, people don't contribute based on knowledge. They contribute based on emotion. They contribute based on feeling. They contribute based on a lot of other things. No, because, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, show me, because of time, we understand yes. that the states can now the federal government has given them the green light to generate and transmit. So we've discussed this before, and we're wondering why are we still where we are? And so there is okay, a level so of discussion. There's a level you get to in telling the people, you know, discussing and telling people, um, giving them terms and explaining to them, and then they get to a point where they say, okay, we've heard. Can we now begin to see actions? Okay. First of all, the federal government did not give them access. The constitution was amended to the extent that they are now able to generate power. And it's not only the states that can generate power. Even the local government can generate power. In simple terms, you can get your local government, which has its own allocation, to make a plan for a few streets, for a few areas, to also generate power. So the options are large and it is in, and those things are important to note because the demand the demand requirement for the average household is very small if you put a one megawatt plant it's going to cover more than 10 kilometer area of houses anyway even in the city even in lagos which is supposed to be one of the areas that demands greater power per household so there is a lot of options for everyone. It is also a private sector apart to it. So when people say, just like you are saying, where are we going to see things happen? It's not everything that is government. So there is sheer responsibility. And the aspect, the thinking, the ethos that makes people believe that all solutions from, must be from the central government is part of the problem. But well, that is not my own. That is not my own. I mean, point to identify. Mine is to just talk about the issues within the industry. So these are the issues within the industry. Um, power sector generation requires so so amount of money. When when you generate it, the options are: should you go to the national grid or should you have a mini grid? Those are the things that are available. And until those things are pursued individually, there will not be power. So there is no magic to it. The idea is the idea or the thinking that we should just give up as a people is lazy thinking. You cannot see a problem and rather than understanding the problem, analyzing the problem and eking out solutions, you just point fingers and give up. No, it doesn't work like that. Let me understand um, let me understand what you mean until these things are are carried out individually. Individually. Yes, let me understand that. Yes. You mean the, the problems it? individually or carried out by individuals? You know, people should take it up. What do you mean by... So, the, 
yeah. to the industry. So the industry, when you talk about the industry or any industry, even if you take your example, your media industry, say for example, somebody wants to start a TV station, he needs to get a license, he needs to get his engineering in place, procure equipment, he needs to broadcast, he needs that certain thing. So if for any reason, a TV station is not uh, getting the signals out, you need to look within that supply chain to find out what is the issue and solve it. Now, in the power sector, it's a little, it's a lot like that supply chain. Now, some parts of that supply chain is not one. A number of parts of that supply chain are not working. So, what I'm saying is that until you address each aspect of that supply chain, until you address each aspect of that supply chain, the the and the aspects of the supply chain that needs to be addressed. Can you, can you hear me? Audio very fast. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, wrap it up. Just your final statement, please. So basically, uh, the, as uh, the aspects of the supply chain, the individual aspects of the supply chain, is what I'm referring to as the individual, until those things are addressed individually. Okay. You can't have results. By who? Supply. By who? The government or the private sector? By the people who are responsible. Okay. Because it's not everything that is going to one person. Okay. Some things are private sector, some things are government, and some things are the people. Okay. It's everybody that has a responsibility. Yeah. Well, like scripture says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, <laughs> so all of us uh, have to contribute in one way or the other to make sure that we have power the way we should have it and when we should have it in this mm -hmm. country. So let's lend our voices to that. We'd like to thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. for coming on the program and lending your voice. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. We've been talking with Mr. Olabo Deshomi, the CEO of Captree, and also Chairman, Hydrogen and New Energies Group of Nigerian Gas Association. He was talking to us on the need for stakeholders to drive more investment to bridge energy deficits and things that need to be done for this to uh, come about. And he li highlighted some of the problems that we have in the energy sector, and all of us are culpable. So we have to sit up say something when we see something, and do something when we need to do something. I'm proud that you don't get so emotional. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am Mari Menlong. We're very thanks for being a part of the show today. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now.